Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. Topping our newscast, a bottling company giant is forced to recall its line of spring water after a contamination scare in a couple of bottling plants. Niagara Bottling Company ordered the voluntary recall last week. Niagara is one popular brand sold in the Virgin Islands and some stores are checking their stock. News 2's April Knight has that story. Niagara Bottling Company is recalling 14 brands of bottled spring water, including the more popular Niagara brand, after an E. coli scare at two of its bottling plants. Niagara made the announcement on Monday, saying they're recalling water bottled in their Pennsylvania plants after one of the springs failed to report evidence of E. coli in the water. Some major stores in the territory, including Price Mart and Plaza Extra on St. Thomas do not carry Niagara products at all, according to store managers. Others, like Costulas on St. Thomas and Plaza Extra at United Shopping Plaza on St. Croix, carry Niagara, but store managers said their stocks did not come from the two contaminated plants, and the water is completely safe. The Niagara bottles with the green labels could be sold at any store across the territory. And while Niagara officials stated that there's no evidence that actual contamination occurred, they're still urging consumers to learn how to spot the bad batch. On the bottle, look for the manufacturing date and throw away anything manufactured from June 10th to 18th. Niagara is also warning against those with best buy dates of June 2016 or December 2016. Licensing and Consumer Affairs Acting Commissioner Devin Carrington issued a notice late Tuesday on the water recall. Reporting for News 2, I'm April night. And Commissioner Carrington urges residents to check their bottled water, Niagara bottles with the blue label, which is the purified Niagara bar brand, is not affected by the recall, according to Niagara officials. In other news, officials from the Education Department appeared before Senators Tuesday to talk about a change in requirements for high school students, while testifiers and lawmakers agreed that CPR is an important concept for students to learn, they said there are challenges to adding it to the curriculum. News 2's Erica Parsons has more. Bill 31-40 made its way to the Senate floor for the second time. I tried it last uh, legislature and now this is my second try. The legislation sponsored by Senator Samuel Sanis would amend the law to have the health curriculum include family life, sex education and substance abuse for kindergarten through 12th grade students. It also calls for AIDS education and a mandatory CPR requirement. I believe it's a necessary um, skill to know. Education officials and lawmakers both agree it's important. St. Croix Rescue officials provided visuals and testimony about costs and ways to implement the program. One testifier said it's the Board of Education's role, not the Senate's, to set school policy. She pointed to other laws that have been implemented. Real estate appraisal for grades 10 to 12 and number 4, that's not going on. I don't believe one should legislate um, curriculum. Uh, it's a matter of we can sit down, all parties can start, even the senators if they want to, along with the Department of Education, uh, formulate the policy. Officials say funding is always a challenge. If we don't have the money to meet the mandates, it's very difficult for us to do it. It's really not an issue. Uh, when, when it comes to people's lives, there should not be a price tag. Even the, the individual that represented the St. Croix Rescue, uh, she stated that it doesn't cost that much to train uh, individuals. Some lawmakers were concerned about the mandatory requirement, but Senator Kurt VLA proposed a fix. I have an amendment that is being drafted right now that would incorporate the CPR training as a part of the health curriculum. Senator VLA's amendment wasn't enough to save the bill on Commissioner McCollum's recommendation. The committee voted 6 to 1 to hold the bill in committee. Erica Parsons, News 2. Senator Tregenza Roach offered a motion to have the Board of Education and the Department of Education be given a time period of three months to determine how to implement that plan. Education officials, meanwhile, hosted a tour of four St. Croix schools on Monday, including two that will be closed next school year. The department invited senators and representatives from the governor's office to, to the maintenance walk to do an assessment. 
I'll tell you that the, the tour is very, very revealing. Um, our schools are in a crisis mode, and certainly we have to do a lot to try to save these schools. I'm amazed by what I saw. Uh, first of all, I got to commend the faculty and staff for working under those adverse environment, as well as the students being able to learn under those adverse environment and still continue to excel. I could only imagine if these schools were better prepared and they were learning in a better environment, what kind of product we'll be turning out. So I want to visit all of the school over the next two weeks so that we could truly see what's going on in these schools. The Charlotte Amali High School's PTSA announced that after that June 18th emergency meeting we reported about, the PTSA has been directed by its membership, they say, to continue the fight to save our children, our school, and our principal, Mr. Stefan Jurgen. On Wednesday, June 24th, a demonstration will be held starting at 12 noon at the CAHS campus. Participants are asked to be there by 11.45 a.m. They say bring your placards, your signs, your pom-poms, and students and alumni are all asked to wear CAHS colors of blue and gold or blue and blue. There's an online petition at change.org. Meanwhile, the VIPD says the march will start from the Shalomali High School leading over Polyburg Hill as it heads to the Virgin Islands Department of Education, making stops at the Virgin Islands Legislature on Veterans Drive and Government House on Kongensgata as it loops back to the Virgin Islands Board of Education, heading over Polyburg Hill and ending at the Shalomali High School. Motorists are asked to seek alternate routes. Some innovative customers on St. Croix who are on the Evo network experienced service interruptions on Monday. Officials say the problem was caused by a commercial power failure that caused a number of EMTA modems to be affected. Those customers may include residents of Montbijou and Christiansted. Any customers experiencing problems in the specified areas should call 911 or have the EMTA battery levels checked. Customers who require new batteries can exchange the expired ones for no charge. Meanwhile, Innovative is also advising its customers at CBS TV2, found on Channel 2 of the Innovative Cable TV St. Croix, St. Thomas and St. John channel lineup, is experiencing unfortunately some intermittent interference due to satellite signal interruptions. As of Sunday, June 21st, consistency of interference has been increasing, causing a loss of signal from the CBS satellite feed. These episodes of interference have been making more prevalent have been more prevalent during the early afternoon hours. According to Michael Kaziski, chief engineer of CBS TV2, the interference is expected to subside within the coming days. In other news, on Saturday, June 20th, at roughly 3.12 p.m., the 911 emergency call center received a report of a robbery that took place on the Melvin Evans Highway in the vicinity of the Good Hope intersection. Officers responded to the call and met with the victim, who indicated that he was parked in the vicinity of the Good Hope intersection when he was approached by two Hispanic males, both dressed in red shirts and black pants, with one of them brandishing a gun. The two suspects demanded money from the victim, and the victim stated that one of the suspects began to assault him until he was able to exit his vehicle and run from the sub sub suspects. Also, officers and detectives were dispatched to the scene where they met with a victim, a resident of Williams Delight. The victim stated that he was in Williams Delight in the vicinity of the area known as the Turf when a male individual approached him and demanded money. As the victim began to tell the individual that he had no money, the man began to beat him about the head with the butt of a gun. The victim stated that he then fled the area on foot as the suspect fired several shots at him, but he was not hit. The victim was transported to the Louis Hospital for treatment. United States Virgin Islands Police Department's Deputy Commissioner Curtis Griffin, along with Chiefs of Police for both St. Thomas, St. John and St. Croix, Darren Foy and Arthur Hector Sr., respectively, they are attending the National Network for Safe Communities seminar that's taken place at the prestigious John Jay College of Criminal Justice located in New York City. The intent of their attendance is to learn effective strategies to reduce violence and strengthen our community. John Jay College of Criminal Justice is home to the National Network for Safe Communities, which works in troubled communities nationally and drives innovative practices in reconciliation between law enforcement and communities.
And turning our attention overseas, South Carolina's legislature is considering a measure to remove a Confederate flag from the Capitol grounds. The move comes almost a week after nine people were killed inside a historic black church in Charleston, allegedly by a white supremacist who was photographed with the flag. Hundreds have protested to demand the flag be taken down. Removing the flag requires a two-thirds vote by both houses of the legislature. Meanwhile, Mississippi has a Confederate flag and its own state flag. Lawmakers there are divided on whether it should be removed. Keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. As we can see, everything up the Dow, 24, NASDAQ, 6, S&P 500, 1. Coming Senator Marvin Blyden is inviting the public for a two-way town hall meeting focused on the condition of Brookman Road on St. Thomas. That meeting, which will be held at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Nada Basketball Court, will be attended by Winston Benjamin, who's the Federal Program Manager at Department of Public Works, Nelson Petty, Project Manager at Department of Public Works, and Andy Smith, President at Island Roads Contractor. The senator is especially targeting businesses and residents living in the Bovoni, Nada, Mariendal, and Friedenhoy communities to participate in the discussion of the road's status. The St. Croix Chamber of Commerce will host business after hours this Thursday at a new spot, the Shoe Bar in Christiansted. It will be a dual event, business after hours, plus a ribbon cutting ceremony for the grand opening of the Shoe Bar. It will take place this Thursday from 5.30 to 8 p.m. and light hors d'oeuvres and desserts will be served. The Shoe Bar is located next to the Old Kicks location. Well, we want to say congratulations to the St. John Festival Queen contestants. That competition was held on Saturday, June 20th at 8 p.m. Miss St. John Festival Queen winner is contestant number three, Chanel Harney. First runner-up was number five, Keisha Campbell. And second runner-up, number one, Kaylee Jackson, Miss Photogenic. Uh, contestant number three was Chanel Harney, Miss Photogenic. Miss Cooperative was number one. One, Kaylee Jackson, Miss Congeniality, number four, Yaritza Torado. Best International Wear, number three, Chanel Harney. Best Talent went to number three, Chanel Harney again. Best Evening Wear, again, to Chanel, Miss Intellect as well. The Festival Princess Competition was held on June 14th, and the new St. John Festival Princess for 2015 is... Sanisha, Greece. Now, congrats to all the other contestants, Layla, Sage, and Tasia. Now, looking ahead, the Children's Village opens at 6 p.m. June 27 in the VI National Park, as well as the Village opening 7 p.m. at the Cruise Bay parking lot. June is the most popular wedding month, as we know, and having your wedding at sunrise is a great way to make it a memorable event for everyone. Having a wedding parade is the icing on the cake. Newly married Jamie and Becca Hewson did just that on Sunday. The newlyweds parade featured colorful costumes, music and dancing in the streets as onlookers took photos, chaired and even joined in the fun. The parade march from the Frederickstead Pier to Coconuts on the Beach where everyone celebrated the end to a perfect day. Congrats to the newlyweds. The Catholic schools across St. Croix got a facelift last week. 20 volunteers from Pennsylvania completed repairs at St. Mary's, St. Patrick's, and St. Joseph's Catholic schools. The group were from the Hands of Christ Service Ministry in the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary Catholic Parish. The volunteers worked for one week on a list of summer repairs that included renovating access ramps, repainting a basketball court, and resurfacing the roof at one of the main buildings. Well, here is a summer enrichment camp to consider at the Children's Haven Academy. It's an eight-week summer fun event from June 22nd to August 14th. There are indoor and outdoor activities planned, including painting, cooking, arts and crafts, calisthenics, and gardening, and much, much more. You can call 690-1836 or 715-1050 for more information. The hours are from 8 to 3 in Anna's Retreat. 
Delegate to Congress Stacey Plaskett is asking the Treasury Department to keep Alexander Hamilton on the $10 bill. In a letter addressed to Treasury Secretary Jack Lew, Plaskett commended the Treasury Department's decision to recognize women's contributions to the nation. She also stated, however, that she takes issue with the possibility that Hamilton, one of the most influential of the Founding Fathers and the nation's first Treasury Secretary, should be replaced or share space on the currency. According to Plaskett, while women are being considered to grace the country's legal tender, Hamilton's contributions should always be remembered. Well, in our consumer alert, all it took was easy was a promise of easy money for a conman to lure neighbors and friends into a bank fraud scheme. As Consumer Reports found out, the accomplices viewed the move as fairly innocent. It turned out to be a serious federal crime. Here's more. He had a serious cocaine problem at the time, and that's why he initially started. It helped him find his cocaine habit. He is Brian Willingham, the ringleader of a fraud scheme that cost banks more than $200,000. Willingham pulled off the scam by luring in neighbors. Different residents at this housing complex, they use their own information to open up accounts through this bank knowing that the only thing they were going to do was receive the checks in the mail and write worthless checks on all the accounts. Here's how it worked. Willingham used his neighbors to set up bank and credit card accounts. Once accounts were active, Willingham would deposit phony checks. And just went the very next day and withdrew as much of it as they could before the bank realized that the checks were worthless. Willingham recruited more than 100 people. All promised they would receive a small percentage of the money stolen. I think that they just thought they were going to have bad credit. That's the worst that they thought they could happen. They didn't even really see it as stealing. You ultimately helped steal $200,000 from this bank. Willingham even recruited family members, including his uncle and cousins who lived nearby. But he made one move that was viewed as out of line. They realized that someone used his deceased grandmother's information to open an account, and that was the one time I saw anybody show any uh, understanding that, well, now, hey, that's wrong. Some advice from postal inspectors, never give your personal information to anyone, especially someone offering you money in return. If you are approached with someone who tells you that, oh, this is a quick, easy way to make money, you can't really get into trouble, no one's going to get hurt, it'll just hurt your credit to absolutely no. When you know that money does not belong to you, you could end up federally indicted. Be sure to keep the advice in mind. Well, stick around. Your News to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.